I want to bring in John Graves. He is an attorney, also the founder of MillionVoices.org. John, all of these stories concerning um, China and uh, President Biden, he's already having a deal with them. It's interesting that we had all those stories that were suppressed about his son Hunter. And uh, do you think he's compromised in his dealings with China? I think he absolutely is. And it's ironic we're having this conversation in the minute in the middle of an impeachment for the former President Trump. Uh, and there was a lot of people that were oppressed. The most powerful stat to me on that issue is 14 percent of the people who voted for President Biden had they known and it not been hidden from them about Hunter Biden, they wouldn't have voted for him in the first place. We wouldn't even be at this place. The interesting thing is going to be, are they actually going to investigate it? Are they actually going to get to the bottom of it? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll time will tell, won't it, as we watch this? <laughs> All right. Um, as we go forward here, I wanted to, uh, to, to, to uh, ask you, John, your thoughts, if you've been able to watch any of the impeachment so far, or uh, your thoughts on it. E you know, I've seen very little of it. I'm part of the, f not the 15 percent of the people that said they were going to watch this impeachment. Uh, I've got too much work to do to watch all of it. Uh, so I just get the highlights with a lot of people and kind of see the analysis. What's interesting to me is what Senator uh, Graham said, uh, Lindsey Graham, is exactly what we said last week. This thing is dead on arrival. The whole thing is unconstitutional. Uh, and even if it's not, there's no actual witnesses being presented here. They haven't even gotten to that. It's all circumstantial. It's all just media. It makes for great theater uh, if you're trying to damage the former president, but it's, there's no substance to it. It's uh, like we say in Texas, all hat and no cattle. <laughs> I like that. The icy conditions this morning in North Texas led to a massive pileup on Interstate 35 here in Fort Worth, about 20 to 21 miles from where I'm sitting right now. Police say as many as 100 vehicles were involved with at least eight reported fatalities as 35 people were taken to hospital with injuries. A number of 18-wheelers were said to be among those 70 to 100 vehicles involved in that pileup. John Graves, I want to bring you in on this. And uh, here's something that makes uh, victory news different than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. We're going to take just a moment and pray for all of those people and all of the lives that were affected. Would you mind doing that for us? I'd be delighted to. God, we just pray for everybody who's been affected, who's lost a loved one, uh, those who are still injured and fighting for their lives. We pray for the people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and across this country that are, that are dealing with these weather issues. God, we pray for their families to be comforted and for you to take what Satan meant for evil and turn it for good in the name of Jesus. Amen, Amen. John. I agree with that. Well, keeping it international, influential Shiite cleric, Mukta al-Sadr yesterday called on Joe Biden to withdraw U.S. troops that currently serve in Iraq. He said he wanted them to leave to spare the country from becoming an arena for regional and international conflicts. He's been opposed to the U.S. presidents in Iraq since the fall of Saddam Hussein in 2003. Iraqi lawmakers voted to oust U.S. troops following the U.S. drone strike that killed Iran's top general, Soleimani, along with Iraq's mil militia commander. During Wednesday's news conference, al Sadar said he warned against the normalization with the Zionist enemy. Now listen to this. He added there must be no parliamentary or political action to prevent normalization with Israel, saying that we will not allow it, even if it costs us our blood. John, I want to bring you in on this. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think that uh, they're more apt to talk and to saber rattle with a Democrat president rather than President Trump? <laughs> they're, they're not afraid of this president. I would, I would echo what Rick just said. Five presidents promised to move the embassy to Israel. One did it, President Trump. Six president promised energy independence from the Middle East. One president did it, President Trump. We're now heading backwards decades in both of those massive, massive victories. And the last thing I would add is in Israel, the peace that he had with other Muslim nations was historic. Everyone talked about peace in the Middle East. It was everyone's top of the list international for the last three decades. And President Trump accomplished something nobody's accomplished. And they're not even in the first hundred days and they're already wanting to go back and flip because we're talking about China, we're talking about the Middle East, and here we are uh, 
uh, again. So uh, it, it, it didn't get enough attention. I agree with Rick. People in the believer community that we're talking to, people of faith, need to continue praying for these things that it doesn't mm -hmm. go back so far that it's hard to repair. The, well, the impact of COVID-19 isn't all bad. According to the Christian Post, a new study out of the United Kingdom found the number of couples considering divorce has actually gone down since the pandemic hit compared to other years when similar questions were asked. The Marriage Foundation survey found that twice as many married couples say their relationship has improved during COVID-19 restrictions. Also found the number of fathers seriously considering divorce was down 50%, while the number of mothers seriously considering splitting up was down by 80%. Uh, John, let me bring you in on that. Apparently, and COVID has helped marital relations in England. I don't know what it's done in the United States, but your thoughts? Yeah, maybe people are back home talking again and, and, and beginning to get to know one another. I, I agree with Rick and Tim's comments earlier that people, there, there's, there's a major um, shift going on when you shut down schools. There's going to be a mass exodus of people going to private Christian schools, home schools, those kind of things, because people long for relationship. They need to see each other's faces. And the scripture I always think about is Proverbs, a man's countenance makes a happy heart. And so when you see somebody smiling, when you're in a relationship with somebody, it is life-giving. The scripture also says a man's spirit sustains him in his sickness. And so uh, we do need to focus on the most vulnerable, but we don't need to let the, the tail wag the dog. This has gotten so silly. We need to stay focused on relationships in every capacity. Well, let me take you back a verse even before that. God looks at Adam and he says, it's not good that man's sure. alone. All right. right. So uh, yeah. you, go, you go to all those. Lawmakers in South Dakota are advancing a pro-life bill aimed at protecting newborn babies who survive abortions. The Senate Health and Human Services Committee unanimously passed a pro-life bill, which is will now go to the full Senate. The legislation would provide the same health care for the baby involved in a failed abortion as one born at the same gestational age. The initial measure, House Bill 1051, is sponsored by State Representative Fred Deutsch. And Rick, I know like you, I am always encouraged when I see states that are standing up for life. Yeah, I think people need to remember, you know, during these tough times right now with all the negative policy we see in Washington, D.C., with the pro-abortion policies coming from President Biden, let's not forget all the pro-life victories of the last few years and the pro-life victories I think we will see in these legislative sessions. We're winning this issue nationally when you look at the polling, especially when you look at the next generation. Gen Zers and millennials are more pro-life than ever. Um, and I think the, the legislation in South Dakota, uh, also in North Dakota and other states across the country, is indicative of that, and I'm hoping for some great victories in the next few months at the state level. Now, John, I'll throw it to you. We get accused of being single-issue voters, but I'm going to tell you, if, if, if life is the only issue I'm voting on, I'll take that every day and twice on Sunday. How about you? I agree with you. It, to me, I've always said it's the slavery issue of our generation, that in 100 years people are going to look back like they did at slavery and go, what were you thinking, treating a person like a piece of property? In what world did you do that? Our kids and grandkids are going to wake up and go, what were you doing, Dad or Mom, in the middle of, of this? They were, they were killing innocent children before they ever had a right to speak. And so, you know, to me, that is a massive issue. And I want to say something. I thought Rick made a great point. We have to stay focused on the good news. We're winning the pro-life issue, and that's the biggest issue that's going on. There's a census that's about to come out that's going to reshuffle for the next 10 years, 435 house seats. In 2022, the smallest margin since 1910 in the House, and historically, it's a tidal wave against the party in power. There's a lot of good news at the state level, on the life level. On People are waking up, even fighting back on the church, the California victory. So we have to stay focused on those things that are good. Even when there's a dark cloud, there's usually a silver lining if you'll look for it. Rick, final thoughts, 20 seconds as the I, Republicans I'll start. Echo yeah, I'll echo exactly what John said. You know, let's keep our eye on the ball. There's a lot of that, exactly what you're saying. It's the mirror and the cat, right? They're creating all these distractions. Let's keep our eye on the ball. Let's keep doing our duty and leaving the results to God. John Graves, last 20 seconds. Uh, tomorrow, the uh, Trump lawyers take over. Thoughts? I want to I, I want to end. I can't remember which, which one. I think it's Proverbs 18, 17, but you can check it out. Uh, one side seems right. They've presented it, and Rick's right. They did a great theory, but... The, until the other side presents their case and cross-examine them. So let's just pray that the truth comes out and the American people are still listening when the second side is presented.